Hi, welcome, and thank you for your interest. My name is Wei Mao Qi. I am a faculty member in the College of Computing and Informatics at Drexel University. Uh, my talk today is from information theory to term weighting, and the subtitle is Alternatives to Classic BM25 IDF based on the new information theoretical framework. Uh, this is the actual title in the Big Data Conference Proceedings. First, I would like to um, acknowledge the support uh, from IMLS and NSF uh, for this research, and also to provide an outline uh, of the presentation. So first, I would like to introduce the theoretical background for TF-IDF and BM25 that will pave the way for our discussion of the theory uh, that we developed, uh, discounted least information theory of entropy, or delight based on which our new methods uh, will be uh, developed uh, for term weighting. And I will discuss after that uh, the experiments and results. So uh, classic TF-IDF, this is widely used. I assume everyone is aware of what it is. There are two parts of TF-IDF. The term frequency, TF-DT, which is the number of currents occurrences of term t in document d and then there is the document frequency nt right which is the number of documents containing term t and okapi bm25 is a version of tf idf which is very competitive and uh, it is actually the default scoring function in elastic search the number one open source uh, search engine so now there are two parts, right? So on the first part of the TF or term frequency weight, there are different variants, right? Uh, in one way, you can just simply use the row frequency, the row counts, or you can normalize the count with logarithm. And the other normalization that is common is a saturation function, right? Uh, to normalize it between zero and one. And then there is also a very common treatment of using document length normalization so that you do not give longer documents automatically the advantage over shorter documents, right? So in BIM25, the TF component is a combination of the saturation function and document length normalization. So that is on the TF side. On the IDF or Document frequency side, the classic inverse document frequency uh, is computed by log capital N divided by NT, where capital N is the total number of documents, and NT again is the number of documents containing the term T. So there are three perspectives on IDF, the inverse document frequency. The first one is Jerry Sorton's uh, heuristic approach the recognition of the inverse relation between a term's informativeness, how informative a term is, and how commonly it appears. So we know that if a term is more common, such as stop words, they start to lose their kind of the power to discriminate. So they are less informative, right? So this is the first approach, first perspective. The second is kind of the probabilistic uh, perspective offered by Robertson and Spark Jones, right? So in that perspective, uh, IDF is part of this log likelihood or odds of a document being relevant. So it's part of the document relevance uh, or specifically the retrieval status value RSV in information retrieval ranking. Okay, the third uh, perspective, which is the focus of my discussion today, is the information theoretical uh, approach. Um, and uh, Professor Azua uh, is really the pioneer in this uh, research. And so in this perspective, the uh, IDF uh, represents the amount of information in a term measured by KL divergence or conditional entropy. And so if you look at KL divergence or callback Leibler divergence, 
uh, it can be computed by the formula here, what it essentially measures is the amount of discrimination information in Shannon entropy for distributions P and Q. I'll stop here without going into too much details of KL, but we will apply KL in the context of a text collection. And if we let Q, QT specifically, be the probability of observing a term T in a randomly drawn document. Think about that, right? That can be estimated by the number of documents containing the term divided by the total number of documents, right? The probability of drawing a random document and observing that term T in it, right? And so that is QT. And we can let PT be the probability of observing term T in the document containing that term. Now this is it's kind of, you may say, that's obvious. If the term can, is in that document, of course you are going to observe it. And so that probability is 100% or 1, right? So, so we have kind of um, used PT and QT to denote the different probability distributions uh, in the text collection. And if we plug these values into the KL formula, now we can compute the KL right, for the term T, which turned out to be the IDF formula. So IDF is equivalent uh, to the KL, and it captures the discriminative power or information of a term based on KL divergence. So now that we know that IDF is actually a, an application of KL divergence, uh, if we look at KL divergence closely, uh, we can examine and identify some of the issues uh, with that um, information quant quantity at the theoretical level. And then on the practical level, we know it has applications on IDF. And there are a couple of issues that we identify here in this examination. For one, KL divergence is not a metric distance, even though lots of people simply use it in that kind of with that kind of notion in mind. It is not a metric distance. It is not symmetric. It does not satisfy triangular inequality. And so it's actually not that straightforward to interpret how um, the scores are and how you can add them up. This is one uh, first issue. Uh, the second issue, which is more fundamental, is that KL divergence is unbounded. It can have infinite values. And so the implication of IDF as, an, as a derived method of a KL divergence is that when you have a rare term, T, when it's very rare, it can be have relatively large IDF. And so that can render other terms in the same text or in the search queries uh, useless. Think about, for example, the example here, the mochi is so tasty, right? So if so has a number of O's in it, it can become a rare term. If the term is very rare, the so will dominate the entire, entire scoring function. And so in this case, mochi is useless. Tasty has no discriminative power, right? Uh, compared to the real term so. And so this is counterintuitive. This is not really helpful. Okay, so with these uh, issues in mind, uh, we wanted to, uh, in our initial research, to identify a new formula or new information theory that have a different set of properties and that will allow us to do uh, term weights uh, in a different way. So for one, we were looking for something that is bounded, uh, that um, has finite values, that is a metric distance. And so our first attempt is was this least information theory or LIT. And that turned out to be a metric distance. It is bounded. And also um, we were able to achieve great results. 
uh, with LIT uh, in the context of information retrieval, clustering, classification, and many other applications. However, LIT was missing an important information theoretic property. And so we were not test totally satisfied with it. Uh, for one thing, uh, it does not satisfy the breakdown rule. That is, the LIT of a system or ensemble is not equal to the weighted sum of LITs in the subsystem. And this is one important property that uh, we don't think we should uh, ignore. And so we continue this journey to identify something uh, based on that uh, we can have all uh, the complete uh, expected uh, properties that we, we really wanted. And so the result is this. So if we introduce an entropy discount, delta, delta H, which is essentially a geometric um, entropy difference between uh, Px and Qx, essentially. And then if we compute Lit minus this entropy discount, that becomes discounted Lit or least information theory of entropy or d light, D-L-I-T-E. And that gives us the full set of properties that we really wanted. Um, so with the entropy discount, d light satisfies several information theoretic properties, including the breaking breakdown rule, which is the d light of a system uh, can be computed by the weighted sum of d lights in the subsystems. So uh, however you divide and conquer the subsystems, when you put the subsystems packed together, uh, you will have the same amount of delight. And so that is very important. Now, in addition to that, and many other properties, delight is non-negative. It is bounded in the range of zero and one. It is symmetric. Uh, delight is zero only when P and Q are identical. In addition, the cube root of d light satisfies triangular inequality. And so that means the cube root is a metric distance. Okay, uh, Just by comparison, uh, the yensen shannon uh, divergence, which is another divergence, uh, also has a similar property where it, its uh, square root is a um, kind of a metric distance. Okay, so just want to I'm kind of throw, throw that out. Now, if we, of course, there are many others we can talk about uh, um, regarding D light, and it does have a set of beautiful properties that we can discuss. But uh, in the interest of time, I would like to move uh, from here to application. So, with D light, we can apply D light uh, to terms and be able to uh, kind of uh, measure the amount of information as term weights. And so remember earlier we discussed the PT and QT in the text collection, right? QT being the probability of observing term T in a randomly drawn document, and PT is the probability of observing term T in the document containing that term, which is going to be one, right? It will always be the case. And so with that PT distribution and QT distribution, we can actually compare and compute the delight between the two distributions as the term weight for term t, right? So that is our alternative uh, to IDF. Remember, IDF is the amount of information measured by KL divergence, whereas our alternative here is the amount of information in the term measured by delight. And now, with the IDF alternative, we can combine that with the TF. And so in our first formula, uh, we have TF times the weight of term T based on D light. Okay, that's our um, method, what we refer to as IDL or ideal. The second version is based on the Q root uh, of D light because we know Q root is the metric distance. And so that is Tf times the Q loop of D light for term T. 
Now, if you compare our formulas to OCAR PBM25, the TF psi is the same. It has the document length normalization is a saturation function. But the IDF is different, right? We have the delight uh, for the amount of information in term T, whereas in IDF for BM25, it has the KL divergence uh, as the term weight, right? So now the comparison here is really to compare not just delight um, our method and idea, but at the theoretical level between our new delight theory versus KL divergence. Okay, and so um, in the, this first set of experiments, we uh, uh, work on the task of information retrieval. So we actually reused um, an existing highly regarded BM25 baseline implementation with Lucene. And we tested the methods on three uh, benchmark collections uh, in the text retrieval conference uh, from 1992 to 2017. So it's really three collections um, spanning 25 years in the history of text retrieval conferences. And we use a, a number of very popular uh, evaluation metrics, uh, the mean average precision or map, and then the geometric uh, mean average precision G map, and then precision at 10, uh, normalized uh, discounted cumulative gain, recall precision, right? And so we evaluate the results, and here is a summary of the best results. And so, if you look at the results, uh, these are the best results achieved on each collection uh, by each method. Okay, and so if you look at it, um, for example, on the 1994 text retrieval conference routing track, the IDL uh, cube root version achieved most of the best results, and the other version of idea also outperformed BIM25. And then if you look at 2005 hard track, uh, it's the same story. The Qt root version has the best performances and then IDL, uh, the, the, the other version of uh, our proposed methods, uh, also outperformed BIM25. And then on 2017 Common Core uh, track collection, the first ideal method uh, outperform BM25 in most of the uh, evaluation metrics. Okay, so you see it's um, consistent uh, outperformances uh, in the result, even though they, there are some cases where um, BM25 may have been better, and um, but it's kind of rare uh, in our experiments. And so uh, we see this consistency of, 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 of results showing that our methods are better than BM25. And especially our methods are better in uh, results using longer queries. So uh, in these different test collections, um, the, the queries can have just a short title or just a few query terms to kind of the full descriptions and narratives. And so we, we observe that when we include the query title, the descriptions and narratives, all the information that we have, our methods perform even better uh, with all these uh, additional query terms or information on uh, what the query topic is about. Okay, so this is another observation that we have. Uh, there are a lot more results uh, in the paper, so feel free to check it out and, and review for yourself. I'm not going to spend time on, on all the details. So I just want to go straight uh, to the conclusion and we can spend some time maybe uh, have questions and answers. Uh, so our findings, uh, we really show that uh, our delight methods uh, achieve uh, superior uh, results compared to BM25. So they consistently outperform BM25 which is a very competitive baseline. 
And so it's not a, an, an easy achievement. And this is something that was achieved out of the box without further fine tuning. And so, um, and we also see, uh, as I said, uh, even better results with longer queries and hard topics. So uh, in conclusion, uh, the delight theory seems to be suitable for uh, problems such as term weighting and applicable in uh, other tasks uh, for uh, text mining and analytics. It can also be applied in other processes to measure information gain or serve as a loss function in machine learning models such as to build a decision tree, right? Now I want to remind everyone that the cube root of delight is a metric distance. So you can use it just as any distance measure, uh, measure because it's, uh, it meets all the, the requirements as a metric distance such, such as triangular inequality. Now, if cube root is a metric distance, uh, in a sense, we can also consider delight itself as a kind of a volume metric, right? It's an amount of information or volume of information uh, that can be measured. So uh, this is just another perspective on, on delight. And so that certainly can give rise to other many other creative ideas and perhaps research collaboration. So feel free to reach out uh, if you are interested uh, in um, further discussions. So, um, so I will leave it here and uh, really appreciate your attention and I welcome any questions or comments and also feel free to reach out to me uh, if you want to discuss this further. Thank you very much.